Hello boys and girls, Lenny from Motorhead here, and you're watching Tequila Television with Salt and Lime. We're here with Lemmy Kilmeister at the fabulous Rainbow. This is one of your favorite places, isn't it? Yes, it is. What do you like best about the Rainbow? The fact that they built the patio out the back for the smokers, that's what I like the best. So the Rainbow is like your home away from home? Well, I mean, I only live one block away, two blocks away, so it's not that far from home. I mean, I got my apartment where it was because it was close to the rainbow, because it was the only place I knew in, in L.A., you know, then. So. I first came here in 1973, the year after it opened, you know, so I saw the glory days of this place. What were they like? Oh, nuts. Keith Moon, you know. Lemon was in there for about six months and every day. Jimmy, thank you. A lot of people used to Jimmy Page, all of them was up with me. Good times, you know. Before everybody started dying, you know, doing their own dog, you know. So, there you go. Surviving the first. When's your next tour with Motorhead? Yeah. Well, we're doing festivals in Europe in June and July. But we're coming back to America in August. We've got the Hudden and Hell tour. So we're uh, second on the bill, third on the bill for that. So we'll be going all around the major American markets and all that. Sheds a hoy. How do you feel about uh, America right now? The political situation. The political situation has been fucked for a long time, hasn't it? Let's face it, you know, that's not news to anybody, you know. But uh, we hope it will change soon. But there again, who is there, you know? There's never anybody to vote for. There's only people to vote against, you know. The election of two evils is not a really good option, in my opinion. But England's the same, you know, nobody to vote for there either. One of the great talents of the world, I've been a fan of his for many, many years, Lemmy. This is Annie, Hi. Uh, former Miss Bulgaria, famous actress from I'm Bulgaria. Just, I was just talking about Bulgaria. What? Yeah, that's, that's what everybody says. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all right. Hey. Stop the act already. We rehearsed our scene. This is one of the great rock and roll stars in the world. He has a group called Motorhead. He's famous as me. He played in Bulgaria twice. I mean. So, um, I hope, I hope she's not fucking on this, all right. Hello, pop pickers. You're listening and watching Tequila Television, and doesn't it make you vomit? <laughs> I, I like Germany, you know, and it's uh, of interest to me because of my collection, you know, so I can go to places where it all happened and have a look at it. And in, in East Berlin, there was a lot of places that were still extant from that period, you know, like... So it's interesting to me. Tell me about your fans. What well, are they like? Well, they range from 60 years old to about 14, you know, so you'd have to pin the category down a little. How do you, how do you like your fans to approach you? Quietly. <laughs> With some manners, you know. There's no harm in good manners if you don't cost anything. I hate people who shout the lyrics of my own songs at me when I wrote them 30 years ago before they were born, you know. I should spray dude, spit all over you, you know, who needs it? But if somebody come up and, like, have a quiet word, that's fine, you know, that's good. What makes you happiest? I don't know, sex probably, is it? I was reading in Wikipedia about you today. Wikipedia? What the fuck is that? <laughs> It's like the World Dictionary. Is it? Yes. Oh. And it said that you'd bedded over 2,000 women. That's bullshit. I said 1,000, not 2,000. <laughs> 2,000 idle boasting, you know. But I mean, I'm 62, and I never I never was married or anything, so I never stopped. So, I mean, 1,000 is reasonable to think about it in those terms. Yeah. But I mean, that 2,000 quote has been going around for years. I don't know what the fuck. Get older, right? I never said it. What kind of women do you like? Female ones. <laughs> I don't mind. I, I do like the uh, 
the eggs also go red and dark skin on the belly as well. But that's because I'm from a very white England, you know. Opposite tracks, for sure. Why not, you know? What's the diff? It doesn't matter these days. In the old days, I've probably been hung as a, uh, you know what, a nigger lover or some fucking thing, but there you go. That's what I am, you know, too bad. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Eat shit, motherfucker. What are your plans, your immediate plans, for yourself? Oh, I plan to go along gracefully, basically. I don't wish to settle down or be responsible or calm down or be a real adult, you know. I'm fucking arrested development is my aim, you know, the whole time. Yes, you have the heart of a small boy. Yeah, sure. A small, nasty boy. <laughs> <laughs> what makes Motorhead tick? The fact that we are so different, the three of us. We never hang out they together anymore. Well, we used to occasionally, but like, it was never a big thing. Some bands are like hanging out, they go everywhere together and all that. And the old Motorhead used to do that, but this Motorhead has been together now for a long time, you know. Phil's been with me for 23 years, you know. And Mickey's been with me for 15, so like, it's, you've heard all their conversations. Yeah. Yeah, on every topic in the world, you know. Except, except for current events, you know, we don't really have to talk much, you know. So we go our separate ways when the gigs are over, and that's probably what keeps us working, you know. What was it like when you uh, were the roadie for Mr. Hendricks? It was kind of baffling, really, because you, you know, I'm tripping all the time on LSD, right? And it's very difficult to get all the wires in the right fucking old room. You can see 27 of them, and they're all pink, you know? <laughs> Hello, mate. How you doing? It was uh, an interesting hey, period. Jackie, I spent about what, seven years on acid. So how are you feeling? I had a lot of acid. You know what I mean? I should be fried, but I'm not. You know. It was a it was a great time that you can't describe it to people. You have to be there. You know. but Hendrix, was, Hendrix was monstrous. You know, you never see anything like him again. Do you think you learned anything from him? And if so, what do you think you learned? Yeah, I learned to fake it and look really cool. Because <laughs> sometimes he was really, if he wasn't on, you know, if he wasn't like into it, he was terrible, you know. But on a good night, he was pure magic, you know. So he had to wait for those, you know. But he was pretty good all the time, I think. Even when he was bad, you wouldn't know. And women went mad for him, you know, then, back then. He was the first black man to play that kind of music, you know. And he played it a really unique thing too, you know, it wasn't like anybody else. You only got to look at the Monterey, that's the best footage of him that survived. It was the Monterey Pop Festival, right, 67. I mean, that's insane. So, And you can't tell how he's doing it either. I spent months watching him, and I couldn't tell how he did anything. It was incredible. And I've seen him play things nobody else saw. You know, I've seen him on radio shows playing Bob Dylan. Can you please go out your window, which he never recorded? All kind of, and old blues numbers backstage with an epiphone to all string. You know, he was really, really something. Him and the Beatles are my favourites. Roadie was my it's a great place, you know, America. I mean, if you come from Europe, America's really, it's a kind of phrase, vibrant and new, you know, like Europe's really old and stuck in its ways, you know, stuck in tradition. And I like tradition up to a point, but it's gone mad over there, you know. I mean, and also the, the economy, the prices in England are ridiculous now, as you know, right? I mean, nine bucks for a gallon of gas, and you think you guys are bad off? You should have to go up again too. It's, it's fucking awful, you know, the economy. If you're going abroad this year, kids, don't go to England. You'll spend all your money in two days. How anybody lives there, I don't know anymore. The only thing that Europe's got which America doesn't is history, you know, which is interesting if you like it. If you don't, then it's got money, you know. And that's about it. I like America. I always, you grow up with all these American shows on the TV, you know. 
and you think, wow, that looks good, and you get over here, and it is, you know, it's just the same. So. I, like, I like it over here. I don't think of myself really as a musician, but, you know, primarily. I'm, I'm more of a personality, as you say, it's still life or something. But I don't spend much time on the red carpet. Never get invited. <laughs> See what I can do about that. Yeah. Well, we got a Grammy a couple of years back, but they stuck the knife in even then. They didn't give it to us for one of our songs, you know. Thank you. For a bad cover of the Whiplash and the Metallica song. Still, there you go, never mind. Would you like to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Have you been there? Have you been there? Have you? I'm from Ohio. So it's such. It's the most mo monumental waste of fucking space I've ever seen in my life. I haven't been for five years, I have to say, all right? But when I was there, the biggest the biggest exhibit was the gift shop, you know. <laughs> I wasn't impressed with the place. And anyway, I lent them my Ace of Spades jacket, tour jacket, for an exhibition of heavy metal, and they, they said they lost it. You know, some of his girlfriends were in it. Yeah. Yes, crying. Shouldn't have done it. Bad news, Cleveland. They got an action figure in me out now. A choice of two guitars and three backdrops. I don't know. I haven't got one, but like. It's quite funny since we've never been in the top 100 over here. That's why I, that's why I say I'm not really a classic musician over here, you know, more of a personality. Roadie was a memorable title for me. It's good enough for them too. The roadies you are and the roadies you will always be. You should be proud of it. When I was a roadie for Hendrix, there's two of us doing all his equipment, so I think it's all lucky. Two of us. The other one had a nervous breakdown. While driving on that, I had. Those are the days. So, yeah, I started out. I started playing in 1961 actually, 62 I was professional, semi-professional I guess, and then I uh, moved up to Manchester in 64, and two years after that I got a job with a band called The Rocking Vickers, the Reverend Black and the Rocking Vickers, and we tore it up all right, we were really doing good business man for those days, we were getting 200 pounds a week each, tax free, we all had cars, we had a speedboat, big big apartment in Cheadle, which is a, you know, a good part of Manchester, we were doing really well. And when that broke up, I went to London and uh, became a road, well, became a dope dealer first and then a road. And then uh, I joined a succession of bands which led up to Auckland, you know, in 71. I mean, everybody in Auckland was a fucking ex roadie I think, except for Dave and Nick. What are you listening to? Um on the radio, on the airwaves. On the radio? Well, there's no point listening to the radio. All you get is bloody adverts, isn't it? Well, Steve uh, Jones uh, from 103.1 was playing some pop wind today. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was very, very entertaining. When is this show? It's on every day from 12 till 2, and then there's a rebroadcast at 6 p.m. of one hour of the show. I should remember that, yeah. I've been on that a couple of times, yeah. He's, he's all right, Steve. He's been doing a good job. Yeah. There's still too many adverts, though. Kills it. Yeah, I mean, the radio in this country used to be incredible. In the 70s, when we first came over, when I first came over, it was great, the radio. You know, and now it's shit. Too many adverts, all this rapping DJs and all this shit. You know, it's terrible. Like the five guys who run all the TV and radio in this country now. In those days, it was a lot of independent, you know, and they played what they wanted. They didn't have to kiss anybody's ass, you know. Used to tune into a blues station out of Chicago. You get nothing but blues all night. Maybe three adverts the whole evening. Incredible, right? Imagine that now. And, you know, I'm not saying the old days because I'm old. They were better, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. They were fucking better. It's not my fault, you know. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.